Hello, in this video I'm going to be looking at and picking three antique padlocks I got for Christmas. These are three padlocks my mom gave me for Christmas. Um, she doesn't know a lot about locks, but she saw all three of these for sale at a thrift store. Um, they didn't have keys, but she thought the keyways looked interesting, and she knows I like to pick locks, so they don't need the keys. Um, and she thought it was a fair price, so she got them for me. And um, Yeah, I think she did get a, a good deal on them. Um, and they do have interesting keyways. Um, in fact, one of them I had not seen before, so that was cool. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, and go through them and start picking them. So we'll start with this guy over here. It says uh, Climax is the brand on the, uh, the shackle there. Um, it's this big, thick brass shackle. I think that's brass. Um, it's kind of got this little interesting pattern on the front and the side here. I'm guessing this is like early, I don't know, maybe 1900s to 1930s. It reminds me of the revenue locks I've got that would have been from around the Prohibition era. So I think it's, it's probably from around that time as well. To close it, we can just close the, uh, the shackle there. Um, and this is a warded lock. This design is still in use today. Master still makes it. Some other brands make it. Um, the easiest way to open these is with a, a set of like warded tryout keys. Um, but they sell warded picks like this. Um, it's essentially the same thing if you want to use those. Um, really what you do is you just try out the keys is the easiest way. And as you can see, this one works here. Um, this design is a little different than I've seen on some of the newer master ones. This one is actually retracting a bolt inside there, right there. Um, I think on a lot of the newer ones, they don't even have like a real bolt. They've just got like um, almost looks like a couple of bobby pins down the side and you're just spreading the bobby pins with this. Um, and if you ever get one that the um, the picks aren't working, like you, you don't get a perfect match, the solution for that is to just close the shackle, um, put in your, your tryout key or your pick, rotate it while pulling on the shackle until you hear a click. And then that's going to be one of them is one of those springs has been set and then you can work down your way and turn. And get the others um, but this one only has the one and it does work on the bolt um, additionally which is kind of interesting about this one is we can just pull it open and that wasn't me messing it up um, it looked like you can see that there's a real fine edge there looks like at some point somebody like forced this thing open um, so maybe it had a tough life I don't know but we'll uh, we're not gonna do that too much we'll, we'll pick it and be nice and gentle yeah, so that's the first one. Um, the second one here, I wasn't sure if it was um, a warded lock or if it was a lever lock at first. Um, I do not know. I, I, I've i seen people pick lever locks, and I, I've at different points in time I've read about it, but I've never done it myself. I don't have any experience or skill with that. So if it was a lever lock, it's like, well, this one might have to sit for a while until I learn how to do that. But um, that wasn't the case. This is actually one of the, just a warded lock. Um, or like the Banbury style um, lock. It's not Banbury, but I think of that when it's it's just that. At first, I, I thought it might be um, lever lock, but one of the things that really made me think it wasn't, let me see if I can try to get the light in there. Maybe you can sort of see a little ridge there below at the bottom of the keyway right there. And that to me just looked like a little piece of warding. Um, and I don't know if they normally do that on lever locks. I don't think it's necessarily, I think you might use that space to, to lift the levers. Um, so I think there would be less warding in that way. So that made me definitely want to keep trying. Um, what I used to open this was one of my multi-pick, um, turning tools. Um, the, there's a whole bunch of different like lengths and shapes of the turning tools. So they, I can go through them and see which one fits in the keyway to turn. Um, and that's what I did here. Um, and then I do need a little more force to turn it. Um, so I've got the uh, pliers here. Excuse me. There we go. So yeah, I'm just putting this in here and there is some warding at the top here as well. So 
So I'm just putting this on here and trying to avoid the voiding and and rotate. Um, and you can see I did slightly bend my uh, my turner there. I'll uh, try to bend that back into shape later. Um, but that's all we had to do for that little guy. That one's got a nice finish on it. It says 11 here, but I don't see any other any other branding on it, so I really don't know when this might be from. Um, yeah, very clean looking though, I think. Okay. And then the last one we have here is this Yale 633. Um, and I had to look around a little bit online for this. There's um, also a 635 that looks very, very similar. And there's another one that uses the same mechanism that has Fidelity written on it that I believe was also made by Yale. But I don't know why it was called Fidelity. Um, right now I've got it picked, and in the pick state you can see a, a couple of bars there. Um, I haven't looked up the patents or anything on this, so I don't know exactly how this works on the inside. I really just sort of played around with it and got lucky, and I'll show you what I mean here in a second as far as how I picked it open. I've done it a couple of times, so it is repeatable, but I, I don't understand the exact mechanism that's, that's working on the inside yet. Um, but yeah, I'll show you how that works. So um, one of the things you'll notice here is that, um, yeah, you may see only two bars there. As I close the shackle, um, you should now see, I believe, four there. Okay. Um, so this is a, I was able to see what the keys sort of look like online, and it's a, a push key, so the key would just get pushed in, and that should pop open the lock. Um, so what I've been doing to pick it is, I haven't been applying tension anywhere. Um, I've been doing it almost like, um, I don't know if it would be impressioning, or I guess it's not impressioning. I'm not using any key. But the whatever the, the force is needed to open this, um, I, don't, I don't need to like apply force to hold these into place. I just take any pick that sort of slides down there, like I'm using this sort of a kind of bent up um, hook I've got. And I just start pushing those bars down um, and saying which one will stick. Maybe now that I'm doing this on camera, it'll decide to uh, act up, but maybe not. There we go. Sorry, I was starting to drift off the camera there. Um, but all I'm doing is I'm seeing these little um, like bars here, and I'm just prodding them with the pick. I'm just pushing them down. As, and as I'm pushing them down, I can see them getting stuck and set. But I'm not applying tension anywhere. Whatever is applying tension is doing it internally on its own. Just by pushing the pick down, I can set those, those bars and open it. Um, yeah, and so there you go. That's uh, that's opening this EL-633. I did measure the, the distances here as best I could, which was not very great. Um, but I tried to measure them as best I could, and I think the key to this one would look something like this. Um, and I saw another key online for one of these being sold that looked very similar to this. I'm curious how much variation there is in the keys, or if it is something like if you get one key, it works for all. I don't know. Um, I think the keys I saw online looked a little different, so that might not be the case. But I don't, I don't know for sure. Um, they did look similar. Um, so this might be something I could 3D print. I think it would definitely be something you could cut out of um, maybe some feeler gauge, get the right size feeler gauge to fit in there and file it down to make a key for this guy. Um, there might even be some other keys for um, you could file down that would work for it. Um, for these two, I would probably look online for a key for this, um, for something similar that I could either, um, that would work like COTS or that I could file to make work. Um, but I 
because it's so narrow, I wouldn't want to necessarily 3D print something for this. I think there's a good chance it would snap. Um, and then for this one, you can find the keys on, online for sure. I mean, you can use like these, like the pick style. Um, but you can just look for awarded keys. Um, and I would say like, if you get one with a whole bunch of teeth on it, um, where they're going up all and down the side, what you can do is you can also take that and you can file those off if you don't need them. Um, but if you do end up using them, great, you've got them. Um, so the more teeth isn't necessarily bad. You can file them off and, and make it work real quick. Um, but anyways, that's, uh, that's going through some, uh, some Christmas locks. And um, Mom, if you end up watching this, uh, thank you. Um, these are cool. Yeah, and uh, thank you all for watching.